There we go. Well, <clears throat> good good day to you. I can't say good afternoon because I'm not sure where in the world you are, but good day to you. Great to have you with us for this now, the fifth. The fifth in the series. Fifth in the series of these webinars that we've been running throughout April, really just to support people and to share some of the tips and techniques that we've learned over the last, what, 20 odd years of, of doing this now, 25 years probably close to, and of which we've had two real seasons of life of living from living at home, working from home. I guess even for us, what's slightly new now is having the children at home as well, having to do school from home. But um, it was actually the very first time that we did it in our second year of marriage when we were that, that kicked us off. <clears <clears <throat> pardon me, stuff. setting up in business um, and experienced what uh, living with somebody who you thought you knew inside out can really turn out to be. <laughs> <laughs> to be like when you're working from home. That's what got us into this whole business of uh, strengthening relationships and doing proactive relationship education. So we just thought we, we would share some of the learnings, some of the key lessons from the things that we talk about in our various workshops to help support everybody through Should lockdown. Should we just check that we are live through the chat section there? Because I'm not seeing that on my monitor here. I'm seeing everybody's yeah, on. Um, can we... Can you hear? Yep, Essie's here. Hearing us in there, fine guys. Everyone's here, wonderful. Great, great to have you. Um, yep, here we go. And wonderful. before we even go any further, today's a really special day. Um, it's our son's 18th birthday. Uh, tomorrow is our 27th anniversary. So I decided to put my glad rags on today and just <laughs> drink pims and have cake after this but it's also essie's birthday essie's been and she's, um, also, on the call and she's also she's been on the call since we started with the first session so i just want to give a shout out and a happy happy <laughs> birthday to essie aqua horizon who is also on the call with us couldn't couldn't go any further without um without, without doing giving the that. appropriate birthday greetings so, yes, we're having a, a week of uh, celebration and enjoying a bit of time off this week. We thought it's the Easter holidays. Let's take a bit of time off, even though we're here. Yeah. Still take a bit of time off. Yeah. And still make a it staycation. special. staycation, exactly. Make so we're special. doing um, cake and Prosecco in the garden after this <laughs> with our 18-year-old. Um, today, we're going to be talking about roles and responsibilities. This applies, really it applies to work and home, but we, I mean, to teams and to home life, but we want to major on the home life and then maybe use some examples with teams and while we're talking one of the things i want to uh, encourage you to do is if you have a pet peeve um chore at home that you really don't like doing just type it into the chat box and let's have some let's have some fun with this some because fun and real sharing because it really i mean these chores Roles and responsibilities are a real source of challenges. The research that was done in, what was it, 2012, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, the later research shows that um, roles and responsibilities and chores around the home are right up there in the in the rankings of things that people fall out over. And we've, we've, we've done our share to add I to that I think statistic. I think <laughs> the third of all couples have major challenges over roles and responsibilities around the home. So it, it is not something to be swept under the carpet, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely not something to be just swept under the carpet. It's something to be taken seriously. It's right up there with money. Yeah. And what's the other one? Uh, I think it was the third one, was in that, on that, on that anyway, ranking. Money, but, uh, chores, probably the parenting in-laws, is the big one as yeah, well. parenting. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that uh, that we realize is that you absolutely have to have the conversation. Yeah. Buried under some of the roles and responsibilities that you end up choosing or divvying out in, when you set up home together are quite often a lot of assumptions that go that go close to the heart about your values, your beliefs. Uh, I know what we discovered, even if what we discovered is there would be things that I might assume about what makes a good wife or what makes a good um, mother, what makes a good person in the home. And there are things that I was doing because I believed I should and things that I was doing because the circumstances at the time yeah. meant that it was more appropriate for me to do it. So when I ran a business from home, John was out working um, five days a week in the city, long hours. I was looking after the children and running a business from home. So I took 
care of a lot of the home stuff, a lot of the cooking and the laundry and organizing the cleaning and et cetera, et cetera. When we started running the business together three years ago, where we were now both home and both full time. I thought it'd be fun for Andrew to continue doing all that stuff. And the weird thing is, <laughs> I I just assumed that I should, but then I found myself getting tired and resentful because we would work neck and neck all day because we were working, uh, building the business together. And then when that was done, my next shift would start and it was suddenly looking around like, hang on, <laughs> why am I doing this by myself? But I think we were both in the mindset of what we were doing before where I would take care of all the home stuff and John would do all the paper stuff and so on. And we just continued in that until I realized, one, it was unsustainable and unhealthy, and two, it wasn't fair. And we needed to rejig and renegotiate who was going to be doing what now that life had changed. What, what's really interesting is it's very easy to settle into a comfort zone. Mm. Something that you've been doing for a while, you kind of just get used to it and you just keep doing that. But when life changes and the seasons of life changes, we, we love talking about seasons because life really does come in seasons. When that season changes, it is really, really important to stop, reassess, just think, where are we now? And have that conversation because if you don't, you will end up just doing things either based on what you've always done um, in, in this relationship or what you've seen done in previous relationships, maybe how you grew up or just what you're more comfortable with. You may be a lazy person. What you prefer. Know, what, you prefer <laughs> what you prefer doing. And if there are things that you don't like doing, guess what? You will kind of, you know, um, pull away from those and then they're just left and dumped on whoever else is there. Yeah. Uh, so have the conversation. Um, it was Sam actually who provoked a conversation once because I think I was in the kitchen in a half about something. Sam, our older son. The, the son who's 18 today. It, uh, probably in a half about something. And he said, Mommy, don't play the victim. Ask for what you want. And I'm like, out of the mouth of babes, because that's so true. Yeah. So if ever you find yourself getting upset or angry about something, instead of speaking the anger, think about, okay, what is it that I want to be different in yeah. this situation? And then ask for it. Because when you can do that, it comes out a lot better than when, when you just say, you know, I'm the only one who's always doing this and nobody cares and nobody is being considerate about me. Yeah. And, all the other stuff that can come out. And, and when I was saying earlier about playing to what comes next to us, um, it could be either around our um, personalities in terms of what comes naturally to us or our values and beliefs and what we've grown up seeing around us and just what we think, our view of what's normal. Yeah. And that's and, kind of what we think. That's and that, that's a really important point because that can be a real challenge and it can cause it can cause people to grate even when you're having the conversation to say, no, I don't do that. Yeah. I don't do toilets. That's just not for me. It was like, we're, we're all using it. So who's going to do the toilet? <laughs> How are we going to agree who's doing what? And I suppose if we all, if we always say, think about the end goal. And if the end goal is you want to create a happy, clean, enjoyable environment Yep, we can share the link. Everything's on our YouTube page uh, under the Soulmates Academy. Sorry, the video is frozen. I guess everybody's trying to use the, the internet. But yes, you can absolutely get the link. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Sorry about that. About, uh, when we... Think. Yeah, it, it goes to the heart of our assumptions sometimes. And we have to be... It, it can grate when people really deep down believe that this isn't something a man should do or this isn't something a wom woman should do but if the end goal is we want to live in a in an environment that we can all enjoy and that we want each other to feel like we're supporting them and having their back then you have a different conversation a more caring conversation because if it's unbalanced in any way if one person's always tired and stressed out and the other person isn't it'll never feel fair and there will never be harmony at home and, and what's interesting actually just jumping in there for a second is people tend to only ever feel their own pain and they, they, they see their own workload and their own pain so they know that they've been doing a lot of stuff and they kind of tend to not um, give credit not give us, as much credit. Well, they not give, don't give as much credit for what the other person is doing. And they think, you know, all they can see is, well, I've been doing all this stuff. And the other person is thinking, well, I've been doing all this stuff yeah. here. And 
until you can have that conversation, and this is not about comparing who's doing more work or less work or what have you, it's just really about having a conversation about in this season of life, given all the different things we have pulling on us, mm. what, what works for us, what could work for us, what feels right. And this is definitely in feeling space. Mm. Um, and if, if things don't feel right, people will tend to build resentment. Yeah, and it, it's a case of what are the things that have to be done? We all have projects, we all have stuff that we would like to be doing if we had free time. But there's some things like, you know, there's the increase in meals with everybody at home. There's the increase in mess about the place. There is, well, not so much laundry, but just life at home has escalated in busyness because everybody is home. So some things absolutely need to be done every day. How we will, how will we share that up and do it in a way where we feel like we're emotionally and mentally healthy we're being taken care of and just, looking after each other i was just gonna say one of the challenges we've had clearly with with the work that we do we've had lots of conversations with lots of people and certainly as some of them have been the issue has arisen where um i think one of the situations i'm thinking of it's the husband who had been out to work normally and the wife would be home and so around about lunchtime he'd be popping up and be saying well, what's for lunch love and she's like what do you mean what's for lunch i sort myself out you sort yourself out and that was her yeah. expectation. What do you mean? What's for lunch? Or how? Why do I all of a sudden have to be preparing meals for you at lunch, which I don't when I don't normally do yeah. it? And they just hadn't had the conversation. And his expectation was she'd be doing the lunch, and her expectation was no. It was like don't come adding to my my to do list. Um, but but you know, then he could do lunch for both of them. Absolutely. And and just given have the conversation. The, it's about the, having that conversation and just saying, okay, we're in this new world. What is what is what works for us and what doesn't work for us? And and what level of tolerance do we have? You know, do bathrooms need to be cleaned every day? Do they need to be clean every three days or every week? You know, one of the things that we do normally when we're in a normal, not the new normal, is we will pay for a cleaner so that we can have weekends that are more restful and more time together because that's one of the big values for us. Um, and because everybody can clean, nobody particularly enjoys cleaning. And I don't know if that's the best I, I use used of to think, be, be really honest, I always used to think it just wasn't in my job description to clean bathrooms and toilets. I don't now know why. <laughs> now it comes out. <laughs> I'll have to be honest. I just didn't think it was in my job description. But I have to fess up that I can actually clean a toilet. I, I've learned how to do it. I've been shown how to do it. Because it's not that hard. It's, it, what's the big deal? I mean, you, you get on with it, you get it done, you're done in, I don't know how long it takes, 20 minutes, half an hour, you're done. That, you're done you're... That's a point I want to go back to, this thing about underlying assumptions and beliefs, because it really gets challenged when you talk about roles and responsibilities. And I just want to plant a thought, uh, if you think about it, even in the team environment, who is the one who will always go and fetch the the snacks you know if you can have donuts or coffee or whatever who's the who's always going to get it is it the man or is it the woman who's always taking notes who's always well, going not, up to not the even, not even from a sexist perspective just who is the individual who who ends up it in can that be kind both. of role it could be both it can be, absolutely because be you can have people in the team mm -hmm. Uh, if we want to say, you know, the stereotypical traditional way of thinking about the male role, who would think that's not their job? And part of this conversation is what we talk about in habit three, ask, don't assume, because assuming uh, can build resentment if you don't actually have the conversation about, OK, how are we going to div up, divvy up roles and responsibilities in a way that works to your strength Um creates balance or in distributing the responsibilities and looks after everybody's mental and emotional yeah. health. That's really where you want to get to because some things one person will find easy and no stress, some things somebody else might find stressful. Yeah. You know, I'll happily go in the kitchen, I'll, I'll share it on the last call, I'll look in the fridge and create something out of whatever else is there. Yeah. John Stenemy, are we running out of time we're, now? We've got 20 seconds to go. We had one last... One last point to make, which is actually that um, once you've agreed roles and responsibilities and carved them out between you, which is a really important thing to do, at some point life is going to happen and people may not be able to do that or they, it may just be one burden too many that they, they end up carrying. So even after you have divvied them up and carved out the roles and responsibilities, still have each other's back. 
Yeah. That's the really important thing to do there. Have the mindset of, well, I know we agreed to do this. And I said that, and I, I know that you had agreed that you would be doing the cooking today or whatever, but I can see you're really stressed out. So yeah. you know what? I'll do the cooking today or whatever it is. If you have each other's back and a, approach life, adopt that mindset, you will have a much, much better experience. That's such a great note to end on because at the end of the day, that's the most loving, caring, supportive thing you can do. If you just know that you're in this together, this right now is called lockdown. Yes, there'll be stuff going on. Yes, we'll grate against each other from time to time, but let's have each other's back and the things that need to be done so we can have more time to just chill. We okay. can have more time to drink Prosecco in the garden. Exactly. exactly. We're going to go and do now. About to go to join now. So that's it for roles and responsibilities and chores around the home. Hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll be back again at 11 a.m. London time talking about uh, next Tuesday. What are we apology, apology. Apology and, and forgiveness. forgiveness. Because we figure being up close and personal means there will be lots of opportunity, lots of opportunity to get it. it wrong and lots of opportunity to need to apologize and to give forgiveness. So we're going to talk about the talking about the five languages of apology. There are five. Look forward to sharing Absolutely. that with you then. Thanks for being with us. Have a great weekend when it comes and see you next week. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.